The power of the sun. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. So as you can probably see from what I'm wearing, uh, big hat, sunglasses, it is a very bright and sunny day here today in Auckland, New Zealand. And I have come out specifically to get some sunshine. Um, and I'll, I'll just turn around here so you can see a little bit more of where I'm at. I'm on a beach and there's the there's the ocean over there. You can probably hear that in the background of the audio of this. Uh, and so I thought, well, hey, while I'm out getting some of the sunshine, I'll make a vlog about why it's so important that we expose ourselves to the sun sometimes. Because particularly in recent years, it's become quite common in, I think, a lot of parts of the world, particularly places like New Zealand and Australia, um, to take a lot of care around how much sun we expose ourselves to. And, and, and this is important too, because there is definitely such a thing as too much of a good thing or too intense of a good thing. And particularly down in New Zealand, to a lesser extent Australia, um, we have been affected by a hole in the ozone layer uh, down in this southern part of the world, which means that we get a lot more UV coming through and that can be harmful in too great a, a quantity. Um, fortunately this is nowhere near as bad as it used to be. When I was a kid it was much much worse and you'd get burnt much more easily. Uh, these days the sun is still harsher here, more UV in it than elsewhere in the world um, and so you do burn more easily than elsewhere and you can damage your skin more easily. Um, and so it is important in these parts of the world to, to, to really take some care around how much sun exposure we get so that we don't uh, damage ourselves. But at the same time you can go too far in avoiding sun exposure altogether. And it's actually really, really important for our health to get some exposure to the sun. And yeah, so in this vlog I'm going to talk generally about some things to do with the sun and then I guess more specifically how this relates to some Qigong practices. I guess I've already started talking generally about some things to do with the sun. Could be quite easy to wax, to wax lyrical about the importance of the sun, you know, on, on a big scale in terms of life. In many ways the sun is our primary source of energy on this planet, or at least a certain type of energy. If you look around, I'm, I'm in an area where there's lots of cliffs and things, but um, all these green plants, we can see some up here on top of the cliffs. The reason why they're green is because they produce chlorophyll so that they can take in the energy of the sun and use it to grow. Um, and as they grow, of course, they draw on other aspects, you know, things, sources of energy as well. They draw on minerals and, and nutrients in the soil and things from the air as well, of course. But the sun is so important to giving them the energy to grow. And then, um, well, as, well, as humans, hopefully we eat lots of plants, we're in a way indirectly getting energy from the sun by eating those plants which have taken their energy from the sun. We, we, indirectly getting energy from the sun. And even if we eat meat, um, those animals ate plants generally, uh, or, or ate another animal that ate plants, that got their energy from the sun. Even if we look into the oceans, you know, all the fish and things out there, how do they get their energy? Well, there are algae that are also green. They produce chlorophyll so they can take in the energy of the sun and then some little sea creatures eat the algae and then other sea creatures eat those little creatures and so even if you're eating fish you're essentially might be one or two steps down the chain getting that source of energy from the sun now of course it's not the only thing it's minerals and nitrogen and carbon and you know, you know all the hydrogen all, the, all those things as well uh, but the sun plays this essential role in facilitating that giving the energy to make everything happen so that's one way that the sun's really, really important for our energy. But it's important in other ways, more directly, not indirectly through food, but more directly for us as well. 
our exposure to sunlight, one of the very clear things is that that's how we produce vitamin D. So we need to have enough vitamin A uh, first in our body and then our, through sun exposure, through our skin, uh, our, our body can turn that into vitamin D. This then is really important for our immune system, really important for the health of our bones, giving us bone density and so on. Exposure to the sun also stimulates uh, production of different hormones. Exposure of the skin to the sun um, stimulates production of testosterone. Testosterone is a really important hormone for a, a whole number of reasons for both males and females. Um, exposure to the sun through the eyes, now I'm wearing sunglasses because it's very bright today, but exposure to the sun through the eyes stimulates the production of other hormones within our body as well. That sets a whole lot of things in motion within us. And if we don't get enough of that sunlight, the consequences can be pretty dire. Um, on, the, on the extreme end, um, a couple of things. You might have heard of SAD disease, <laughs> which is very aptly named as, a, as an acronym. So it's Seasonal Affective Disorder. And it's basically, it's people who don't get enough sunlight in the winter and, and this is typically for places where it's very cold, very dark during winter, that people don't get enough sunlight. And it affects their mood, they get depressed. And it's, it's a physical thing, it's not just like, oh, cheer up. It's like, no, their body isn't, or doesn't have enough stores of certain vitamins, like vitamin Ds, it's not being stimulated enough to produce certain hormones, and it really then has a flow-on effect to their mood, and they can get seriously depressed. As part of that, it's also quite common, people with SAD disease, um, to also have issues with bone density. Again, as I mentioned, the exposure to the sun, we produce vitamin D, stimulates testosterone, all that sort of thing. Really important for bone density. And that can be really, really serious, where the bones get very weak, very fragile, and break, and so on. And then it affects a whole chain of other things because it's affecting our mineral metabolism that can affect the function of the nervous system. Really, really important. That's a direct exposure to the sun, not just through the food we eat. Really important as well. So, as you might imagine, if the sun is so important to our energy on a planetary level, uh, and also within our own body in direct physical ways, well, Qigong works with energy, right? And, and all sorts of energy, as I've talked about before on this vlog, um, Qigong is an incredibly vast field. You know, a lot of the time, in many of the practices, we've, we're working with three main tools, mind, body, and breath, to tap into our energy, to work with our energy. Um, but, but Qigong practices, working with our energy, encompasses so much more often. Uh, all the different things that affect our energy. And so, yeah, it would make sense that there are Qigong practices that specifically work with the sun as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these, but just a little bit of insight into a few of these. You know, even at a very, very general level, one of the things that you may have heard of is that um, practicing Qigong at different times of the day has different effects on your body and on your energy and specifically on different organs. And that essentially what it comes down to, it relates to the pattern of the rising and setting of the sun and how that affects our levels of activity in our body and then our organs. Our organs change their activity, their pattern of activity according to, you know, in sequence through a day. What's most important at the start of the day, in the middle of the day, later on in the day. And that then affects the flow of energy through uh, the meridians and the activity of the organs themselves and so on. Um, I've made vlogs and I've written articles about this previously, about the, essentially it's the meridian clock that helps us to understand this, how uh, there's a pattern of activity in different organs that goes with the, the time of day. So I'll put some links uh, to those below, you might want to look into those. Really, really interesting, but essentially this is all driven by the sun, the rising and setting of the sun, how that affects us, and also how it affects all of nature around us, and then our body develops natural patterns of how to respond to that. So that's quite direct. Even more directly, there are practices that focus on sometimes the direction we face in. This is another example. And, you know, part of this can be facing east and west, 
the rising and setting sun have different qualities. The rising sun is yin transitioning to yang, becoming more yang, more active. And then the setting sun is yang transitioning to yin, uh, so becoming more settled, more calm. And so when we face towards these energies, we take that energy in and it has an effect on our energy within ourselves. Um, and so some, some practices specifically work with that. And uh, I actually saw a really beautiful sunset last night. I went with some friends out to a, a beach on the west coast of Auckland here and saw a, a beautiful um, sunset. I might even put a photo somewhere of, of that sunset in this video so you can check it out. That might be a beautiful little visual. Anyway, that's a little bit of an aside. Um, similarly, there are practices either facing directly towards or away from the sun. And, and again, this is about taking the sun in and how strongly we take it in. Because as I mentioned earlier, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Uh, and there are times when we want to take in as much sunlight as we can and other times where it's like, okay, let's take some in, but we'll take it in more gently, right? We'll try not to take quite so much in because that might be too much if we take in too much all at once. Um, generally, the softer surfaces of our body take in energy more easily. The harder surfaces we'll keep it out a bit more. It's not that we don't take in energy at all through the hard surface of our body, but we take it in more slowly, more gently. So if we face towards the body, the front of our body tends to be softer. This takes in a lot of energy from the sun or from other things as well. It's not just the sun. If we face away, so we face our back towards the sun, we'll take, take in less. And so um, if you're doing practices right in the middle of the day when the sun is very intense, it's common to face away from the sun. So you're still taking in energy from the sun, but more gently through the hard surfaces of your body. When the sun is gentle, sunrise, sunset, other times when it's gentle, you might face directly towards the sun. Uh, if, it's, if the sun's being filtered through a cloud, you might face directly towards the sun. Or if it's a season where the sun is gentle, you might face directly towards it. Because it's gentle enough that you can take it in through the soft surfaces. There are other practices as well, um, specifically focusing. So, because general practices facing in different directions will have an effect on, you know, taking that yang energy from the sun. Um, but there are other uh, practices where we specifically tune into the energy of the sun and we focus on drawing it in, washing it through our body, uh, taking in the benefit of that, really connecting to that energy. Um, some of these are done using movements, using breath. And then some are using specifically the eyes. I mentioned earlier that um, taking in the sunlight through the eyes stimulates the production of different hormones in the body. And so there are practices done looking towards the sun and specifically to take the sunlight in through the eyes. Now the most common time of day to do this is sunrise when the sun is very gentle. Um, there are some practices that you can do during the middle of the day you need to take a lot more caution around them. You need to take caution around even at sunrise as well. I'm not going to get into the details of that particular practice here, but um, a, a well-recognized type of qigong practice for taking in the energy of the sun and having an effect on, well, a physical effect on your body, but then therefore on your energy as well. And again, the ones done during the day, there needs to be a lot of care taken with. So yeah, so there's all sorts of different practices, um, qigong practices where we specifically um, work with the energy of the sun. One, in terms of the long white cloud qigong practices or, or courses, the syllabus that we have, um, at the moment the main place where we talk about some of those types of practices working with, uh, with the energy of the sun, also the moon, some other environmental energy as well, trees, oceans, things like that, is in the elemental alchemy program. Um, that's the one where we go through wuji, taiji and wuxing, so formless through the yin and yang, and through the five elements and different practices working with those. Now, a lot of those are practices using the mind, body and breath, you know, moving and breathing with different aspects of awareness to tap into our energy. But we also, as part of that, um, look at practices working with environmental energy as well. So if that's something you're interested in, that might be something you want to explore further. Uh, there'll be a link below to where you can find information about that course. Um, the next one's not for a while, depending when you watch this video, of course. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that might be something you're interested in. So anyway, um, as, as you can see, I'm out here to get some sun. Why am I then wearing a hat and sunglasses? 
Well, as I mentioned, you can get uh, too much of a good thing. And so I'm walking on my way to where I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time and I'm going to expose some more of my skin to the sun to specifically take some in. But I don't want to be getting too much on my head, too much on my eyes, too much on my shoulders, you know, from all the time walking here and back. I'm going to I'm going to take care that, yes, I'm going to get some sun exposure, but I don't want to get too much. Um, I don't want to harm myself. Moderation in all things, yeah? It is really important that we, we do get that sun exposure. As I, as I talked about before, um, you know, in the extreme, sad, sad disorder, uh, bone issues, hormonal issues, you know, all those sorts of things. In a more subtle way, you know, a, a good example here in Auckland, where I am, last year we basically didn't have a summer. Um, and that was, uh, hmm. we had like a week in the early summer where it was sunny and another week sort of between Christmas and New Year's. And then after that, it basically rained the whole summer. Maybe there was a, a day here or a day there of sunshine. Other than that, we didn't really have summer and it just kept raining right through until winter. Um, and, and you can really see the effect that has on people. Not all the way to necessarily the sad disorder, um, where you know it's a clinical thing, a serious clinical issue, but overall mood, people are a bit more gloomy, a bit more depressed, a bit more prone to different health issues and things like that because their immunity's down and so on. And I've experienced this in Auckland here before as well, um, where not as extreme as this last year, but previously where there's just so much rain, so much cloud in a particular year, and then it's like everyone's. A little bit depressed for the whole rest of the year until they get a decent a decent summer a decent bit of sunshine and so it's really important when we do get the opportunity to get some of that sun exposure when we when we produce vitamin d in our body our body actually stores it quite well and so we can build up those stores during summer so that they last all the way through the rest of the year through winter and you know until we get more sun later um so yeah it's important we not get too much sun exposure, it's still important that we get some as well and really um, make the most of the opportunity when we do have that opportunity in a healthy, balanced way. All right, hopefully that's interesting. This is this topic is it's probably going to tie in pretty well with a couple of other vlogs that I think I'm going to try and record today as well. Some stuff relating to seasons, some stuff relating to COVID. Um, so yeah, I might make reference to it in those as well. All right, I look forward to seeing you on another one soon.